Curtis Adams. I've never heard this one before either. Uh, Uncle Dave Meltzer wrote at one point that you were being considered for a place in Degeneration X. I believe the same week Jericho's debut occurred in the SummerSlam, uh, sorry, in the Summertime Millennium Countdown 1999. Was this ever a consideration? And if so, what were the initial discussions like? It was a consideration right before I signed with the company. I had met with Vince. And by the way, absolutely, totally unprepared for what sat across from me with Vince. And there was no preparation. Like I said, I was very immature in a lot of ways. But I think Vince also knew that I was going to try to work hard. I just, you just don't know sometimes with Vince when he wakes up in the morning. And I'm sure Dutch said that what you're getting with Vince, if he's going to yell, if he's going to be happy, he's going to like it, not like it. And that was that was on the table. He was talking about possibly making me part of DJ, DX, but I would be the guy who would bump and take finishes, I think, which was totally fine with me. Later on, I was actually early, early in the process considered to be an evolution too. Because I wanted young guys that could be, they considered myself, they considered Jindrak, who was best friends with Randy Orton at the time. And I think that's why he didn't get it, because they were they were out doing things and partying. I don't know what was going on, but Jindrak was, I thought it would have been a good choice and it ended up being them. I think I was like one of the first guys they thought in that beat them up role that did jobs for the group or whatever, mm. which by the way, I'm still in evolution or DX. It wouldn't have been, <laughs> wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, right? No, definitely not. So I know you just said more or less what you, I mean, the way you described it, it was Virgil, but I can't imagine you would have been the Virgil of DX. But uh, is how was it presented to you? Just be a part of this. And, and then I was just like, okay, I would love to learn from the guys and whatever you guys need. I didn't give too much feedback on what what I should do or not do or what I, what I thought I should do. Mm. But I think I would have been more than a Virgil thing. If anything, I would have been the, the, the asshole that to- opens his mouth and ends up getting them in trouble and I got to get beat up for it. I think I'd be a little bit more than just standing there doing nothing. No, I'd hope so as well. So what was like the Sean Waltman in NWO? Because he was sort of like the guy who was almost, you know, he was the guy that you could beat, but he was like a full member and fully part of the and gang. he was the most annoying thing. member. He actually got yeah. over being, being annoying and over the top. And I did see that as a, as a maybe a blueprint to follow when they first said that we'd like for you to maybe be in this. Yeah, uh, permit me, I've got to just quote this. It's one of the best Ric Flair promos ever. And he's with Sean Waltman and Sean, and he says something. He says, ah, uh, "This is Ric Flair saying it's Sean Waltman." And he says, Six, you're a fly in the ointment, and later on tonight, I'm going to kick your flyweight ass." I love that line. <laughs> Just a great line. Um, so this would have been bad guy heel degeneration X at this time if it was like later 1999. Well, in 99, I think they were just coming around to possibly, possibly being baby faces because they started that during the, atti- the Attitude Era and all that stuff started around 96, 97, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, 97. So Triple H left and joined the corporation at WrestleMania 15, which was April or late March 1999. So this was sort of like the uh, the, the in-between portion of DX where there was only like Road Dog and X-Pac. So I don't know if you had like thought to join at that point or when Triple H re- and Stephanie McMahon and that whole version of DX... I don't know which uh, era you would have joined. Your guess is as good as mine because I, I signed <laughs> the company in June of 99 and then debuted in Chicago with Meany uh, when I debuted on uh, Sunday Night Heat. Hmm. And then we were at SummerSlam. And we didn't do anything except local metal matches and stuff like that. And then we did the SummerSlam thing where we tried to attach a car, you know, battery charger to Pepper. Remember Pepper? <laughs> yes. also, dog? I do. Very well, I remember Pepper. Uh, oh, I had something else. Oh, also, uh, quick fun fact: you were on the very first episode of Jacked. If uh, that means Sorry. anything to you, yeah, I think you were teaming with Meanie. I was always destined for those shows, and that's why I created Stevie Night Heat. <laughs>